Okay, back again. Um, welcome back. I'm dragging out my window here. I'm making that a little bigger. Okay, I might even zoom in a little bit. Alright. That's a little too much. Nope. 150, that looks good. How about 120? Alright, there we go. That's a little bit better. Alright, so uh, here's what I got so far. Um, and what I was going to show you how to do is uh, set up a layer mask so that we can fade this this switch or this router in and uh, and have that as part of the site. That looks kind of cool. I don't know. So anyway, I put that right like that, just just dust it the way I want, and select the layer that I'm working on. I'm working on this bottom layer here, and then I'm going to go down here, and let's see here, what do I got here? This is, I think, believe, the um, tool for creating a layer mask. So I have the layer selected, I click down here, click this button, and now I have a layer mask. And the layer mask will allow me to either reveal the entire image or conceal portions of it, or I could conceal the whole thing. So for instance, if I, I'm going to turn off the eyeball on the text layer so that we just see this, um, this image. If I take a paintbrush and I flip these colors so black is on top, see I can flip them right here, um, and I paint, anywhere I paint black, watch this, painting black, I let go, the black shows up in my layer mask, and now we can't see that part of the image where the black is. So that's how I've masked out this area by painting black in this mask, essentially, right? So I can just keep painting black all I want, and of course I'm not like that, so now I need to edit, step backwards, edit, step backwards. All right? So what I think I'll do is, I think I'll do a gradient. So I'll do a gradient tool, get my gradient tool, black to white, and what I can do is I could click and drag with the gradient tool and look what that did in the mask. It put a black to white gradient. See I could go like this and stretch it all the way across and then it slowly you know fades in because look at the mask. The mask over here if I hold down the alt key and click on the mask it shows me the mask I actually just painted. Right, hold on the alt key and kick uh, alt key and click in the mask again. So, what I think I really want though is something that's a little bit shorter, so something a little more like that, right? And then if I turned on dance courses, you would have the text layer, and I could adjust how that shows where I wanted it and all that jazz. Now, let's say I wanted to fade in the other edge of this image on this layer right here. Turn off the eyeball on this layer. Um, what I could do is get my paintbrush and see the size. The size is about so big, so I'm going to change the size of this to about 24. Check out the size of that now. Yeah, that's good. I've got black. And what I could do is I could just right here hold down the shift key and then paint along the edge. Now, I'm no longer painting in the mask, I just painted black along my image and I didn't want to do that. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. Make sure I click in the mask. Notice now I'm in the mask. You can see the little highlighting around this mask window. There's a little highlight box. And I'll try that again. Okay, I'm going to paint black and then drag. And you see that it paints a strip of black right there. Okay, hit Edit Undo, Control Z, and I'm going to try again click to paint, hold down the shift key to get a straight line, and paint across. That looks nice. And then over here I'll do the same thing. Click, hold down the shift key and paint. All right? And I could do it on the bottom as well. Uh, click, hold down the shift key, paint across the bottom. All right? And I'm going back and forth a couple times. And you can see in my mask window, I'm going to Alt-click in the mask window, you see what I did was paint a little faded black area here, and I've got the black gradient here, and when I Alt-click on the mask, 
it allows just this part to show with a nice feathered edge. Now I can turn my text back on and I can play with the color of my font. Maybe I'll change that to white to see what that looks like. You know, dancecourses.com. Maybe I will open this up and click on the outer glow and play with that outer glow a little bit. Maybe I'll up the opacity. Maybe I will make it a little darker. Maybe I will uh, take the spread, up the spread, and the size. You see, there we go. The other thing I could do is I could add another effect to it. So I could say layer, layer style, and maybe put a stroke. Okay, and with the stroke, say okay, black is the color. That looks cool. Um, centered one pixel. Click OK. And now I've got a one pixel outline around the text. Now it's not looking so hot, so I want to change my view to 100%. So I'm going to go up here to the view window and go back to 100%. And so that's what it would look like. It looks a little bit better when I actually go to 100%. So now I'm good to go. I've got my logo for my site, my new logo. So last but not least, file. This time, instead of saying save as, I'm going to go save for web and devices. And I'm going to, it's a big window here. Let's see if I can make this smaller. I can't. Shoot. All right, save for web and devices. Over here, I'm going to change it to a JPEG. No, with a JPEG, I won't be able to save my transparency. With a GIF, I could save my transparency. With it. How about a ping 24? So I'm going to pick a PNG file, uh, 24 with transparency. I'm going to interlace it. All right, so I've picked the, the way I want to. Um, with a GIF, I can have transparency in my image. With a JPEG, no transparency. So all that work to make that layer mask with a transparent background will be gone. If I save it as JPEG. So I'm going to save this as a PNG 24 file with transparency and interlaced. That should be good. Uh, the save button is down here at the bottom. I'm going to have to go click that and hit save. All right. It says where do I want to save it? I'll save it to my desktop for now. Sample logo.png. Watch this. There it is. Sample logo.png. Good. Hit save. All right. That's great. And now this file is sample logo.psd. Photoshop document and I'm going to save that also. Just file save. And I'm done.